I'm pretty comfortable saying that was the bottom, right? Interesting. Um, okay. Look, I, I thought the bottom was 17.8 on June 15th. Mm -hmm. I really thought that was the bottom. Right. But I said, I didn't see FTX being a complete fraud. I, that wasn't on my bingo card. So, you know, we lost another couple grand to that. That's yeah. actually pretty good. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Now, when I say pretty good shape, I mean, I think this is a short squeeze. I think we'll have a retracement, a pullback. I think it's still positive. And short of a liquidation of GBTC, I think we are in the beginnings of the accumulation phase again. Veteran hedge fund manager and cryptocurrency investor Mark Yusko has joined the list of top market participants who believe the Bitcoin bottom is in. Following the FTX collapse in November, Bitcoin dropped to a bear market low of $15,500 from a previous low of about $18,000. According to the veteran investor, the previous $18,000 range was the true low and marking of crypto spring. However, Hurricane Sam, the disgraced former crypto billionaire and FTX founder, brought in some shaky weather, which Yusko says is typical of spring. With that out of the way, Yusko believes we are back on track for spring and about to begin the beautiful transition to summer. The veteran hedge fund manager also discusses the possibility of a short retracement that could take Bitcoin back to the $18,000 range. If that does happen, Yusko says it won't be overly unusual, just one of the final signs of the transition from spring to summer. And Yusko believes that the transition won't be far along. In fact, he does not rule out the possibility of a new Bitcoin all-time high in 2023 or early 2024. He also predicts that the next halving will push Bitcoin to $100,000 sometime between the halving and the expected peak period about a year later. But Yusko is not all about Bitcoin. In his interview with Paul Barron, he also names his top four cryptocurrency assets, which he predicts will perform brilliantly within the coming years. Before we listen to Mark Yusko's outlook and price predictions for Bitcoin and other top cryptocurrencies, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations on Yusko's interview in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. There was a lot, there were a lot of good charts that said 10 to 12 was really the, the mm -hmm. lower level that we should have hit and we didn't get there. So, yeah. Um, now, look, GBTC unravels, Tether sure. turns out to be a total fraud. That's a different Dell game. Tech Bank yeah. is, is yeah. running money for, you know, some crime syndicate. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, now we got black swans. Then, then maybe, <laughs> then maybe ten to twelve comes into play, but I don't think anything lower than that. And, I, and I'm very comfortable saying the fifteen was was it, and that, and we're back into spring. I I don't I don't I'm not even sure we're gonna you know head back through the eighteen level. I yeah. I I think the best thing to watch is uh, higher lows and higher highs. So as long yeah. as we keep making higher lows, I'm comfortable uh, that we're in a bull bull period. Uh, this was definitely in a this was definitely a short squeeze, right? The last three weeks, total short squeeze for sure. Um, now we need now we need to see signs of accumulation. Uh, if we see signs of accumulation, that'll be really really good. My belief is April May is the beginning of the nine month run through right. the halving, which. Yeah. I, we'll see some I ebbs and flows in there for sure. Hundred is on the table, right? I interesting. I think okay. we're going to add a zero. I think we're going to ten x the market cap, and and we're going to, uh, you know, back to that three trillion level, and we're heading. We're going to not back to. We're going going to yeah, the, go the three trillion it. level, <laughs> and I, I think that's coming. And yeah, it doesn't have to come tomorrow, and it doesn't even have to come next month or even by April May. I, I think it's you know, Q1, Q2 of, of next year, and that 24 right. is the yeah. peak before we go back to yeah. No, I said, the big point I wanted to make that I forgot about earlier was you got the fundamentals on one side, and then you have the monetary piece on the other side. And here's the thing, Bitcoin and gold, but because they're both you know one and the same, don't like quantitative tightening. Right. They right. don't like money supply growth shrinking. So mm -hmm. we actually have had in the recent months, the first time in 60 years, six zero, money supply, money supply actually shrink. Interesting. So okay. if, and again, that's capital I, capital F, if, if the Fed 
follows. See, Japan already pivoted. Right. Japan unleashed a tidal wave. I mean, mm-hmm. tidal wave of liquidity. And you look at the yen went from 153 mm-hmm. to 128, like almost instantaneously. I mean, crazy. I mean, Kurodasan is crazy. I mean, the, the dude is I mean, otherworldly when it comes to printing money. I, that, that was first. Second, China has uh, increased their credit impulse. Yeah. Um, starting in kind of May, June of last year. And I think they're going to, you know, unlock from COVID zero. And, and I think they could stimulate half a trillion. I mean, yeah. a big number. So yeah. if, if the Fed follows, then that'll be good. Because the thing that people forget, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. We don't price it in Bitcoin, we price it in dollars. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the reason that Bitcoin goes up over time isn't because Bitcoin gets better, it's just a Bitcoin. It's because the dollar's getting worse. And right. so when we're quantitative tightening, the dollar got strong, which meant the price of Bitcoin went down. Now, as the dollar's getting weak, and the dollar's been in free fall, right, since October. I mean, absolute free fall. DXY just getting crucified. Sure, yeah. And so if the Fed follows through, then I see a big tailwind for Bitcoin, gold, and, and all stores of value. Last February, Yusko named four crypto assets in addition to Bitcoin and Ether that he believed could withstand a market downturn relatively well. He named Avalanche, Cosmos, Polkadot, and Solana. Since then, Avalanche has gone from $95 to $18, Cosmos from $30 to $13, Polkadot from $18 to $6.5, and Solana from $95 to $24.7. As a result of the bear market and various contagions and collapses of the past year, these assets have lost around 81%, 56.6%, 66.6%, and 77.7%, respectively. In comparison, Bitcoin has fallen from $44,000 to $23,000, a 48.83% decline. A year after he made that prediction, here's Mark Yusko discussing his updated list of top crypto assets and why he likes them. I used to say, form your base, Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. Avalanche, Solana, Ethereum. Um, I might modify that. I might, I might ditch Solana. I think it was a SAM coin or scam coin a little bit. I, I think there was a, I think there's a lot of good development on Solana. I think there's a lot of good projects on Solana, but For unfortunately, sure. I think that was one of the, the manipulated, it's not as bad as Serum or FTT or, um, right. Oxy or a couple of the others, but so I'd probably take Solana out of there and I'd probably swap in uh, polka dot and, and cosmos. So that doesn't make a very good mnemonic, but, uh, I probably pull Solana out of that, that six and, and, and keep the other five. Cause the, the reason I like those five is I'm not sure whether right now we have five protocols that govern the internet. So there's TC, there's IP at the bottom internet protocol yeah. and there's TCP IP and there's FTP, SMTP, HTTP, www. All right. I can argue that on top of Web3 is Bitcoin is the base layer, Filecoin mm-hmm. is FTP, Ethereum is www. And Cosmos, Polkadot, Avalanche are SMTP, HTTP. I don't know which ones. So we end up with five or six. Or I could make a case, kind of not as well as the maxis, that it's Bitcoin always, Lightning, L3, L4 that haven't been developed yet, and yeah. who knows on top, and that there is no other L1s. Or I could make the case that Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cosmos, and then we have right. bridges and interactivity, interoperability. I'm not smart enough technically, Paul, to, to <laughs> tell you which one of those is going to happen. I think the key to investing in this ecosystem is diversification. Yeah, right? for sure. Don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, you want to have a, a big chunk in Bitcoin, fine. But if you think about it, if Bitcoin is as successful as we all think it will be, it won't be the best performing. Full right, stop, for sure. Right? Just because it's, it's going to get to that the largest. Point. It's yes. just the law of large yeah. numbers, right? You're not going to go from three, actually 400 billion today. You know, even if you go to 4 trillion, that's a 10 bagger. Okay, mm-hmm. Ethereum at, you know, I don't know what Ethereum is, 180, maybe 200 billion. 
uh, if it gets to a four trillion, almost that's twice yeah. as much. Yeah. Almost two hundred. So that's almost twice as much. But if 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 Avalanche actually becomes mm, that that's a big intermediate one. layer or becomes a, a bridge to connect, you know, Ethereum and big, I don't know, but it could be, you know, maybe a 50 X. And so I think you want to diversify your portfolio, not to like, if you want to speculate on the dog coins, be sure. my guest. I'm not going to yeah. do it with you. People want to do that. To me, that's literally gambling, just literally gambling. It's like buying AMC or GameStop and, and you want to gamble that there's a greater fool, knock yourself out. <laughs> um, maybe someday there's a developer that does something that Doge and, and Shiba can yeah, do something, sure. but I don't. Who knows? So, yeah. but, but look, change. I got a debate with a guy I really respect and, and admire. Um, and he said, no, there's value in memes. I'm like, uh, well, but, but I, no, but I, but I believe, I believe his point, which is it's reflexivity. Like Soros mm. said, the fact right. that people believe it makes it so. Mm -hmm. And it is true, right? I mean, it's a 10, what, Dogecoin is a $10 billion asset or $11 billion mm -hmm. asset. Yep. People believe it. Now, the problem is, who would they all sell it to? Is the Bitcoin bottom in? If not, which you think will occur first, an upside rally to 25,000 or a retracement to 18,000, as Yusko predicts? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and contributes immensely to the channel's growth. Thanks for watching.